Welcome to your gold, silver, Bitcoin market update for the week ending 12th of March 2021. I'm Miles Harris. Let's dive on in. Now, this channel provides global macro insights and champions the importance of sound money in a world gone crazy. So please do consider subscribing. So it's been a good week for gold and silver, both showing up green here. We can see gold up 1.6% over the week, silver up 2.8% on the week. Uh, and we can see that gold has uh, had a nice bounce off that low of 1677. Perhaps the only downside was uh, just not seeing uh, silver hold that $26 position uh, at the market close. Moving on to the macro indicators, well, the Fed's balance sheet has reached another all-time high, uh, and uh, we can see that the DXY, and we can see that the DXY dollar index has come down slightly from the preceding week. And so if we look at the gold chart, well, we can see that the uh, gold price had a significant bounce off uh, that uh, 0.618 on the uh, Fib retracement there. Uh, and that really is uh, um, very, very significant. Um, that also maintains that longer term trend in the black line there. And it's interesting to note just how oversold gold had actually become. Now, in this chart, just going back uh, two and a half years or so, we can can see just how oversold gold had actually become. Um, we can see that that uh, longer term trend line in uh, the deep black has been maintained uh, thanks to that balance that we've seen this last week. But we can also see that the RSI uh, indicator had reached its lowest level since back in uh, the fall of 2018. Meanwhile, the MACD indicator uh, hadn't seen such lows since uh, back in 2013. So gold really has been looking very, very oversold. Is it a bottom? Well, time will tell. Um, we can't be sure yet, but certainly there's some promising signs. If we have a look at the GDX ETF for the gold mining stock, and we can see that certainly that has bounced, and that's bounced off a uh, 0.5 uh, fib retracement. So that does appear to be significant. And if it gets above that 30 day moving average in blue there, uh, then that does suggest that we are moving towards more of an uptrend and potential recovery. And if we just uh, extend that on to have a look at a streaming firm such as Franco Nevada, uh, that has now actually regained a position above the 30 day moving average. So it does suggest that the trend is certainly moving in the right direction at last for gold. And so Garrett Goggin put out this uh, splendid chart here, just illustrating that gold deliveries continue to be off the charts and the 20 day total is three times the next highest years so far. Of course, whether these are actual physical deliveries taken off COMEX is another question indeed. And so if we now look at silver, we can see it's just outside of that $26 boundary, but it's still just about maintaining that upward trend since uh, a year ago and the big liquidity events we saw then. And meanwhile, for the gold silver ratio, it's holding out at 67 ounces of silver for one ounce of gold. And so moving it on, the, the big macro news story over the course of the last month has been that of Treasury yields. And we can see that Treasury yields have risen quite steeply over the course of this last week. And that really does seem to be very, very interesting, given that we've actually seen gold and silver uh, stage some sort of recovery. WTI oil down slightly on the week. But let's have a look at these Treasury yields in a little more detail. And so here we've got the US 10 year government bond yield, which we can see has uh, now reached 1.62 uh, this week. What has this meant for bondholders? Well, as Holger uh, points out here, that global bonds have lost $1.5 trillion in value in the past four weeks on inflation concerns. Now, what's interesting to note is that Treasury dealers may well be offloading bonds as a regulatory deadline nears at the end of this month, as this article just points out. And it's worth just considering this, given that there's an FOMC meeting uh, for the Federal Reserve Monetary uh, Policy Committee this week. 
And so what it states in this article is one explanation for the disconnect is that dealers are taking steps to trim holdings before the expiry of a key regulatory exemption on March 31st. From April last year, banks have been allowed to exclude treasuries and reserves when calculating their supplementary leverage ratio as part of crisis measures introduced then. This allowed them to hold more treasuries than they otherwise may have done. The scale of selling so far may just be the tip of the iceberg should the exemption elapse at the end of the month. BMO sees room for more than $200 billion in Treasury bond selling. It may also have serious implications for bank capital and the Treasury market and create balance sheet constraints and impair market functioning around stress events according to TD Securities. Now, with the Fed meeting this week, I'm going to be very, very interested to see whether the Fed actually puts back this deadline, because I do not think that they want to see any more forced selling of Treasury bills. And the yields potentially spike dramatically higher, which would cause all sorts of problems for the wider economy, could spill over to the corporate bond market, and that would really cause significant concern. So I'm expecting that they are likely to actually look to push back this deadline, and that would very much uh, appear supportive in helping to control bond yields, and that is, of course, price supportive for metals. And what we've also seen this week is that Christine Lagarde has uh, uh, called rising bond yields undesirable as the ECB steps up to purchase to soothe the market. And so she said that she's concerned about these and how the uh, higher rates could actually impact upon any recovery. The ECB said it would step up the pace of bond purchases to try to support lending in the economy and rising bond yields have clearly worried the markets in recent weeks. But European yields fell after her decision. And so if we just look at the uh, ECB's balance sheet, well, we can see uh, this priced in euros here. Um, we can see that it's actually now far, far greater in size than the Federal Reserve as the largest central bank globally. Meanwhile, something else we looked at a couple of weeks ago was the, treasury, was the Treasury General account. And we're now starting to see this Treasury General account being run back down as we discussed in a previous video. This would certainly appear to have the prospect for being inflationary, but not according to the Federal Reserve, of course, who prefer to use the Personal Consumption Expenditures PCE measurement, which excludes food and energy uh, prices. And so here we can see that uh, inflation still remains uh, very low, apparently. So let's now move on to the risk on risk off indicators. Well, we can see that uh, utilities have had a very, very good week this last week. And so certainly there are some investors who are deliberately rotating out of uh, risk areas and moving towards uh, more bond like sectors, necessity items such as utilities. And that's very interesting to note because it's been a great week for utilities. Meanwhile, for bondholders, it's just been a dreadful month. And the SPX has uh, recovered quite substantially to see a new all-time high once again this week. And so moving on to Bitcoin, well, it's now broken through the $60,000 mark, and it appears to have done so courtesy of the stimulus payments that have just recently been uh, doled out in the US. I thought previously it really would need something of real momentum to get it past that uh, price, that previous all-time high, and clearly we seem to have seen it with that stimulus. Now, previously, Bitcoin has very much worked to four-year cycles, as we can see in this uh, longer term chart, uh, which goes back to uh, 2013. And so it would appear, according to this cycles based approach, uh, really championed by the likes of uh, the excellent Bob Lucas, it really would suggest that Bitcoin is likely to see a dramatic high in the autumn of this year. So this may well be a good point to actually really focus on taking some profits and redistributing them to other areas. Because uh, I think uh, we're very much in an uptrend uh, here and with institutional uh, adoption increasing, there's every likelihood 
that things could get pretty frothy in this marketplace. Thereafter, we could possibly expect another cycle low, uh, and that might be an opportunity for those of you that are into Bitcoin to actually get back into this. Uh, but certainly, I'm really targeting autumn of this year as a potential uh, point to really take some profits here. Now, I hope you found this uh, overview of what's been going on over the last uh, week useful. Thanks so much for watching. Do consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.